and the antiderivative of x. So basically the antiderivative is the thing that when you take the derivative of it gives you what you're looking for. So in this case we're taking the derivative of something and it's going to give us x. We want to figure out what the something is, the thing in that blank circle. So d dx, the derivative with respect to x of x squared, is going to be 2x. We bring the exponent in front, we subtract 1 from the exponent to get 1, so it's 2x to the 1, and then we take the chain rule, which is dx over dx, which is just 1. So you don't necessarily have to write it in this case. For something like the derivative of y with respect to x, you would write dy dx, and the chain rule is very important. If we take d dx of 3, which is a constant, we're talking about the rate of change of it, so that's going to be 0. That's going to be important for the idea of the antiderivative. If we take d dx of y cubed, we get 3y to the 2 dy dx. So we bring the 3 in front, that's the exponent, we subtract, and 3 minus 1 is going to be 2. So we want to get something that when we take the derivative of it, we get x. Let's plug in x squared, because that was pretty close to what we wanted. 2 minus 1 is 1, and we bring the 2 in front, we have x to the 1, that's really close, it's really just off by a factor of 2. So let's change it a little bit, we'll modify it to get what we want. x squared divided by 2. That's going to basically counteract the multiplication by 2. So you get the 2x again. You have your division by 2. So you're going to get x. So the antiderivative of x squared over 2 plus a constant, because the derivative of a constant is 0, so we want to throw that in there. The constant can be 0 itself, but it could also be any other number. So the antiderivative of x is x squared over 2 plus c. And as you get farther into calculus, you'll start using the integral sign. So you'd say that the integral of x dx is going to be x squared over 2 plus c.